My role in the, in the FCCC project is to lead participatory research, particularly looking at uh, local knowledge about trees and agroforestry practices, and to look at what is driving land use and land cover change, uh, both inside and outside the Virunga National Park. We're conducting field research uh, and, and we're working with our local partner, which is uh, WWF, the, the implementing partner. So WWF are looking at, at, uh, at promoting uh, woodlot, uh, energy woodlots around the, around the park to reduce the pressure. And we're working with them and with their partner associations, so tree planting associations, in trying to understand what species and what agroforestry options we could design to improve the delivery of ecosystem services. What we're hoping to achieve is to, is to design uh, agroforestry options that are suited to different field and, and farmers' conditions, uh, to try to diversify both the types of species that are planted and, and, and they're you know, for different purposes, and, uh, and to train uh, technical agents of different staff in, in, the, in these different practices. Well, outside the, the Virunga National Park, there's very few forests that are left. So most of the forests are actually found in the protected areas. They're under severe pressure, both uh, for, for timber extraction, for charcoal extraction. There's also encroachment in, in the park for agricultural or pastoral purposes. Now, outside the park, we, we have, um, we're addressing issues of soil fertility and, and erosion uh, problems that are, that are occurring on agricultural land and trying also to, to increase tree products, uh, both for nutrition or medicinal purposes or for, yeah, for home consumption or income. The Virunga National Park is, apart from being one of the oldest uh, parks in Africa, <clears throat> with a very high level of, uh, of endemism and, and very high concentration of mammal species and different forest ecosystems, which are very important uh, you know, for, for global conservation. It's also an interesting park because it is located on the border with Rwanda and Uganda, and, and it has been at the heart of, of you know, several decades of political military conflict and which have meant that it's been very difficult to, to protect the park. The Virunga National Park has an iconic species, which is the mountain gorilla, which is, uh, you know, so it's receiving a lot of international attention for the protection of that endangered species. ICRAF is, is providing technical backstopping to the project to help uh, select or design uh, tree selection and tree management uh, tools so that implementation partners can actually uh, diversify and match species to different farmers needs and farm conditions because we're in an area with a with with a high altitudinal gradient so very different uh, agroecological zones within the same area so it's important to to, to, to select species that would match both the agroecological conditions but also the needs of farmers, which can be different both in terms of gender differences or ethnic differences, um, and farm sizes. Well, one of the major challenges around the Virunga Park is that, oh, and one of the major drivers of land use change has been the expansion of eucalyptus plantations for the production of both timber, firewood, and charcoal. So that's what most of the reforestation programs have focused on. What we're trying to see is how we could address other, f other needs, uh, such as nutritional needs with, with the promotion of fruit trees or medicinal trees, um, and trying to, to broaden um, the list of species and, and not focus on a few exotic, but, but rather include also some of the native and endangered species that used to occur in the area. The approach that we're using is to integrate local and scientific knowledge uh, about different tree options. So that's, that's why we've conducted uh, two local knowledge studies, looking at what farmers know, what is growing in their fields, what they know about it, both in terms of their uses, but also in terms of their management. And, 
and combine that, so that's our goal, to combine that with available scientific information, with lessons learned from, from neighboring countries where, where there has been uh, several interventions like Rwanda or Uganda with similar agroecological zones, and, and to, um, to design these options, these different options. So that's, that's how we go about it, integrating local knowledge, validating it with stakeholders, and integrating it with scientific knowledge. So we've had uh, a lot of, of, uh, of interviews conducted in the field. We've also had focus group discussions. And more recently, we've, uh, we've prepared two um, participatory workshops or technical workshops where we've fed back the results of our local knowledge studies to local stakeholders. So who are these stakeholders? Both uh, the technical staff of WWF who are leading reforestation projects, but also other environmental associations, other farmer associations, uh, local scientists, um, extension staff, the rural advisory staff. So we've conducted these, uh, these workshops where we've uh, tried to, to look at the different agroforestry options and what were their, you know, what were their opportunities, what were the constraints associated with them, and and what were the solutions to these constraints. And so, what really stood out from these workshops was that people really increased their understanding of agroforestry as as a, as being a diver, you know, offering diverse uh, options, opportunities for tree planting, and you know, outside, you know, woodlots of monoculture, also not uh, focusing on just a, a few so-called agroforestry species like fast-growing leguminous shrubs, but really thinking about how we can improve uh, tree diversity and tree cover on, on farm with different options that would be different uh, according to, to the different needs. So you would look at improving fruit trees, for example, in homesteads, but looking at erosion control on slopes and, uh, and also natural regeneration, looking at different options. So what's really stood out was people's perception of agroforestry really changed in the opportunities that it can provide for farmers. Sure, there, there, there are clear differences. So some of the, some of the tree products or, or uses such as timber or, or, or beekeeping are male uh, dominated uh, sectors, let's put it this way. Women, on the other hand, are more interested in, in fruit trees, but not just in planting the fruit trees, but actually in adding value to, the, to these fruits by transforming it and, and marketing it. So that was another difference. Women are also more interested in the supply of, uh, of firewood as well, which, which is their main concern, and also on improving um, soil fertility in their fields, although they, they have you know, knowledge gaps when you compare to, to men in terms of, of, of their knowledge of different options that you could have for improving soil fertility. This year we've really concentrated on, on collecting on collating local knowledge and, and understanding. We've validated, as I've just said about with the with the participatory workshops. Now the, the goal is to is to analyze this, this information and to combine it with what we know of agroforestry practices in the region and to design uh, tree selection and management tools that are customized to uh, to both the Lubero and Masisi district and, and from which we can we can help uh, partner organizations to, to plant trees.